I mean, let me just. Hi, everyone. Is it an airplane mod? No, because I need, I need, um, sorry, we're trying to figure out the tech, we don't want anybody technical of it all, but I have put it on do not disturb. I know just airplane mode is the way to go, but hey, it's okay. Let's um, it. <laughs> okay. It doesn't matter. We are where we are and we are not going to be interrupted because it's on do not disturb. So let's hope that it doesn't get interrupted. Should I, should I disconnect and, and go back on? And put it on airplane mode? I just get disturbed when it's on do not disturb. I get phone calls. Oh, damn. Okay. Hang tight. Hang tight. We're going to go on airplane I'm mode. I'm going to go on airplane mode. Okay. Okay. All right, we're back. Oh, that man. wasn't as difficult. I was okay. worried I was going to lose everybody. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Dana. Airplane mode works good. Okay. Hi, guys. Um, we Hi, are here today on a Saturday, and thank you all for joining us. Um, I hope you can hear us okay. I feel like I always need to get closer to speak, so um, maybe Skaz, you wanna come closer? Well, Lana, Lana and I felt very strongly, as I'm sure all of you have, with everything that's going on in our country, we're literally heartbroken, and we thought, how can we help and make a change in any way and this is what we wanted to do we wanted to share and give love and sound and healing and we picked some appropriate poems that we wanted to share before the sound healing that we both feel very passionate about yes there's this has been a, a horrific week this has been a, a really hard few months globally with this pandemic this week has taken us over the edge um what we all have witnessed this week, um, the murder of George Floyd is beyond comprehensible. It is um, embarrassing for our country. I am in shame. And um, we are, know there's a lot of people who are grieving, who are angry, who are retaliating and um we thought as and just to reiterate what trish said is how do we you know be the voice of change and i have been posting quite a bit on uh, the subject of of what's been happening um and i started really angry i am angry i am still angry and i'm also broken heartbroken um, but we want to provide some comfort and healing and love and, and shed unity. love and unity to all of you who um, are also grieving this loss and what is happening here. And um, we want it to be the voice of peace and love and um, stand together and unity. So. Um, we do have a couple of poems that we'd like to, to read to all of you. And we didn't just randomly pick these. We pretty much couldn't sleep all night because of the discord and reached out to friends to eat that could shed some light on maybe the proper things to read. And this is what Lana and I wanted to share with all of you. This poem is part of a longer epic narrative poem titled The Song of Hiawatha. It tells an origin story of the peace pipe of the indigenous Americans from before the European settlers arrived. In this section, the great spirit calls together the nation and offers them the peace pipe as a custom to create and maintain peace among the nations and among the people. O oh, my children, my poor children, listen to the words of wisdom, listen to the words of warning. From the lips of the great spirit, from the master of life who made you. I have given you lands to hunt in. I have given you streams to fish in. I have given you bear and bison. I have given you roe and reindeer. 
I have given you brant and beaver. Fill the marshes full of wild fowl. Fill the rivers full of fishes. Why then are you not contented? Why then will you hunt each other? I am weary of your quarrels, weary of your wars and bloodshed, weary of your prayers for vengeance, of your wranglings and dissensions, dissensions, excuse me. All your strength is in your union. All your danger is in discord. Therefore be at peace henceforward. And, and as brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters live, live together. together. Now this next one we're going to read, this is written by Tupac Shakur's mother, Asata Shakur, and it's called Revolution. And if you're reading it, there's an R and a slash and then evolution, meaning revolution will be our evolution. This is the 21st century and we need to redefine revolution. This planet needs a people's revolution, a humanist revolution. Revolution is not about bloodshed or about going to the mountains and fighting. We will fight if we are forced, but the fundamental goal of revolution must be peace. We need a revolution of the mind. We need a revolution of the heart. We need a revolution of the spirit. The power of the people is stronger than any weapon. A people's revolution cannot be stopped. We need to be weapons of mass construction. We need to be weapons of mass love. It is not enough just to change the system. We need to change ourselves. We've got to make this world user friendly. Are you ready to sacrifice to end world hunger? To sacrifice to end colonialism? To end neo-colonialism? To end racism? To end sexism? Revolution means the end of exploitation. Revolution means respecting people from other cultures. Revolution is creative. Revolution means treating your mate as a friend and an equal. Revolution is sexy. Revolution means respecting and learning from your children. Revolution is beautiful. Revolution means protecting the people the plants, the animals, the air, the water. Revolution means saving this planet. Revolution is love. Amen. Asata Shakur. So now, please take all that in with you. Find a place where you can just close your eyes and let go of everything. And let Lana and I bring this beautiful gift of sound to heal your hearts, your souls, your minds, your future. Let go of the past and let's create a beautiful new future together.
yourself back into this space and time by taking a deep breath, wiggling your toes and your fingers. Take your time. You don't have to open your eyes. You can even stay asleep and whatever is comfortable to you. We just want you to take this healing energy today and let's all be better. Let's all be better people. Let's all stand up for our brothers and sisters. We will not stand for injustice. We are all the same. And we love you all. Carry you in our hearts. Sending peace, love, and healing to everyone. Yes, thank you so much for joining us today. And, um, and we pray that this has been um, healing and rewarding for everybody who's joined us. And we love you all and thank you and pray that you go in peace. And if you want to see change in this world, be the voice of change. You have an opportunity to change the course of this world and the hardships in the world and the hard path that we have steered this country on. And, um, so we ask you to please be the voice of change in a, in a very firm, bold, yet respectful and peaceful manner. Thank you. We love you all. Thank you all. Have a blessed day. Bye. Oh, wait. You know what? Not yet. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I think I'm a mess, a mess over here. Um, that's okay. Um, I didn't know if anyone had any questions. Ah. I felt like we have a little bit of time, actually. Um, Let's do it. So I lied. <laughs> I'm like, it's over. No, it's not over. <laughs> I think it was emotional for me. Um, I love you guys so much, by the way. Like, I really do. I think we're all sideways and stuff. We're using a stand, but it's a little bit on the shplagaka side. Shplagaka. It's a new word. It's a little shplagiks. Oh, there we go. I think this is weird. Oh, no. Of course me. question? Yeah, wait. Hold on. I, I can't even see anything. I gotta get close. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you tell us how you're feeling? <laughs> um, sure. Uh... I am enraged, I am grieving, I am, um, you know, I've been an advocate for Black Lives for a long time now, and um, I did some work with white people for Black Lives, even though I'm a brown woman, <laughs> I'm Latina, but um, sadly, um, people just see things one way. Anyway, um, I am feeling um, heartbroken and I feel very upset and sad and this is keeping us all up at night. I'm having a hard time sleeping and not really knowing what, you know, what to do other than doing what I'm doing, which is reaching out to everyone here and asking you all to please rise and stand up and use your voice and fight for human life because it this is the color of our skin is what's caused all this for centuries and it's just i don't even understand it and thank god i posted no. that and said thank god i just was not made that way i don't i wasn't raised that way and I'm grateful for that. Um, I don't even, it's, it doesn't make sense here. So I just, um, I want to be of service and try to help people open their eyes and see that we are no different aside from our skin color. But we on the inside have, we have the same blood color, we have bones, we breathe the same, we all 
you know, it's just, we have a heart and some are, some hearts are black and in my mean rotten, (laughs) that's what I mean. And we need to change those hearts, you know, in the same way that my character had that black heart, you remember? And, um, and we, what she needed was love and forgiveness and, and understanding and these people with dark hearts, they need to be shed light. We need to open their eyes. They need to see what is wrong with all this thinking. So, um, you know, this is a delicate situation. It's a delicate subject matter. And it needs to be handled delicately, but um, but with force and, and yeah, with firm, because um, it's serious. It's serious. And really enough is enough. So that's how I feel. Um, Let's see, any other questions? Thank you for all your love here. I love you too. What can you do to help under isolation? Do you have some links? Isolation in what sense? I think quarantine. That's why we're doing this. Oh, this? Okay. (laughs) Sorry. It's starting to open up in other parts of the world. I don't know where you are. Um, I mean, I have found many ways to stay creative. And most of my time has been helping people. Um, all the black and Latino communities in Brooklyn. You know, all all the, the kids there. And I want to thank you all because we have raised over $90,000 for these summer programs for these kids you know, that are providing outlets for these children whom are colored and they are going to get paid and be able to bring food home to their families because their families are in situations where they've lost their jobs. You know, um, the the disparities are so severe and um, we need collectively as a whole to help people that are suffering. There are, we learned last night, one out of five children in the United States that are suffering from starvation. Now there are other countries that are worse off. And if you are here in this country, we need to help our people. And wherever you are in the world, we need to help those people. But we need to help. <laughs> you know, however we can and help each other, help each other, raise awareness, raise funds, um, donate even, even $5 makes a huge difference. Anything like I've been telling people, some girls are writing saying, I don't know if I should buy one of your t-shirts or donate. I'm like, donate, (laughs) don't buy one of my t-shirts, donate, donate, donate. That's more important. T-shirts will be there. That line hopefully isn't going anywhere, but you know you can buy a T-shirt in three months. You can you can figure that out right now. Put five, ten, twenty-five dollars, fifty dollars, one hundred dollars, whatever you can, to help um, you know communities and people in need. Um, okay, what else here? I don't even know if I answered your question. I think I did. Uh, oh, isolation. Yeah, yeah, be, stay, be creative, find ways to give back, find ways to help, use your voice, start, you know, use your platform on, on social media and reach out, reach out to your family and friends. People can sign petitions and donate on top of that. Someone said, get educated, that's right. You can spend your time looking into the situation and understanding that people are acting due to having reached another's boiling point. Okay, thank you. Who said that? Thank you for this piece. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, My mom was saying today that everyone struggles no matter who they are and that life is just confusing for everyone. People struggle on different levels, absolutely, but there are different levels. There are different levels of struggle and we are all struggling with different things, but there are many that are far worse than us and we need to help those people. You know, we can get bogged down by our own issues and our own problems all the time. It feels really heavy and it weighs us down. But the most healing thing that I've found is to help others in need when you are feeling really low. Being of service. 
makes you feel better. It does. And it makes you feel stronger. And then all of a sudden, your problems seem less when you are of service. When I, I had a horrible heartbreak breakup when I was 28 years old, a man I was deeply in love with. And he broke my heart. <laughs> and um, I, a month later, I had been planning to go to Sri Lanka because of the earthquake. This was in 2005, I think the earthquake was in December, and I went in January. So a month later, I went out to Sri Lanka. I spent two months working with over 800 to 1,000 children of Muslim camps, uh, Buddhist camps, Christian camps. And for the first time in their history, all of these segregated groups, they came together because the devastation caused you know, it, it was, it affected everybody. And so whatever culture, religious beliefs, it didn't matter at that point. What mattered is we need to help each other. And so I was working at different camps, these refugee camps. And when I think it was started at the Muslim camp, when the word spread to the other camps, the Christian and Buddhist camps, all these children started to join the Muslim camp because we were there and we started an art therapy program for these kids. And all of a sudden, like to see that happen, and then I started thinking about my heartache. I was like, what heartache? Look at what, look at this. My problems now, my problems were there and I was in pain for sure. But what I saw and what was happening in the world was so much greater than my heartbreak. I can heal from my heartbreak, mm -hmm. but I can't let my heartbreak break me. My heartbreak cannot break me. My heartbreak had to push me forward to heal by helping others and also just by my own love for self and sanity, heal myself. So in these moments when you're like, oh my God, my problems, my problems, step outside of yourself and look around you and see who needs help. And I guarantee you, if you help that old elderly woman across the street or a, a, a family who's less fortunate than you down the block or two miles away, or you make sandwiches and you give them to the homeless or you make a nice donation or you communicate to these kids somehow or family, whatever, you, for that period of time, are gonna stop focusing on yourself. Mm -hmm. And you're going to give your mind and body a moment of rest from your worries. And that is when the healing starts to take place. And you're going to feel so much better. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Okay, let's see. What other questions? I have no... <laughs> Thank you. I love you guys. And this is why we're here. Because love is the revolution. And it's the healing. Okay, thank you. I'm exactly, Dana, I'm hugging you and I love you. Hey, Dana. Dana, I love you, stay strong. No one can fully, people can't understand. It's try, everyone struggles and no one can fully understand each other. But you know what? All we need to understand is that everybody struggles. And that everybody's human. And that everyone struggles on different levels. And that, um, you know, we can't compare. <laughs> Lola, thank you. We can't compare. Um, we can't say my, my woes and troubles are worse than every. <sighs> Don't even, just compare is despair. So forget about comparing. Just know, okay, I am suffering and I have my story and that person's suffering too. And you know what? It can be on a, a smaller scale in your mind. Say someone's going through a, a loss and someone just, you know, someone's going through a loss of like a family member who passed on and someone else just, um, you know, didn't get the job they wanted. Okay, those are on two different scales. But the sorrow is still is still there, right? Yeah, I, you know, I just want to add to that. Struggling is inevitable. We all go through it. But suffering over it, that's a choice. And 
you have to just know that you have so many ways to heal yourself, like Lana was saying, by helping others. That is the main thing. And to say you're allowed to, you're allowed to be in pain, and so are they. One doesn't wash out the other. I bet if you talk to ten people, nine of them are in pain. But we can all live in pain together, realizing that no one's is greater. No, we don't have to compare it, like Lana said. But what we have to do is have compassion for everyone else. Have compassion for others' pain. And then to have compassion for ourselves, and then you won't even judge someone else's struggle as different or less than yours or greater than yours. We just like mirror each other, and you will find if you're vibrating at a certain frequency that that's the energy you're going to pull in. So if you're always suffering, struggling, you're going to find more of that. But if you start to give and love and have compassion, you're going to see your life elevate to a different frequency because your frequency is changing. And so you attract what you put out. So if you put out love and healing and positivity, that's what you're going to attract. Yeah. Opportunities will change as well. Um, any other questions? Everyone in the world should hear that. And thank you. <laughs> I agree. Um, thank you, Dana. It's okay when it's quiet, isn't it? <laughs> it's okay. Nice. I know there's a lot of suffering in a lot of people in Brazil. Someone wrote to me last night and said that there's a lot of suffering in Brazil, that the president there is not treating this as a serious pandemic a, a matter that and um he is um not a lot of people are dying and the numbers are going up so i'm very sorry i think that um it's unfortunate when we have leaders that aren't taking this pandemic seriously and aren't guiding us properly and we understand what that is. It's on a different scale, but we understand. And we're fortunate here that we have governors and mayors who are saying, These, this is how I'm, I'm taking charge of my state. I'm taking charge of my city. This is, these are the rules. And, um, and so I know it's not like that everywhere in the world. Mm. Um, and yet our country, I think our numbers are- One third of one the deaths. One third of the deaths, but I, I'm, I need to check today. Um, I know it's really bad in Mexico, and I know it's really bad in Brazil, and um, and I know it's because of the leaders there. So I'm sorry, and all I can say is, you know, any information that you do have, that you can find from other countries that are are you know taking the right precautions and and um, following the right steps to make sure that we. Watch, watch that, watch that those that news. Read those articles and follow their guidelines. Even on airplane mode, someone called me. Only Facetime and uh, those usually get through on airplane mode. I know. I don't. He not called me normally. Um. Okay. Let's see. And silence is beautiful. <laughs> How do I stay strong? Jamie asks me. Is that Jamie? Jo Jamie line. How do I stay strong? It's, it's, it's work. I've been actively working on myself and I know Trish has for, well, she's a bit older than I, but I've been working on myself actively in self-enhancement work for 24 years. Mm -hmm. 24 years. It's a commitment to yourself for life mm -hmm. and just making sure that you make yourself a priority, and that means discipline. You know, it's a lot of discipline. And it's, it is a lot of discipline, and it's also a lot of love for self and wanting to not be controlled by the tragedies that you've experienced in your life. Not wanting them to bog you down, meaning hold you back, you know, pull you into the mud, and create a hardness, a callousness, a shield, where you can't let love and light in. 
And so my biggest fear from all my losses and tragedies that I've experienced in my life was that it would harden me as a person and therefore no one would be allowed in. And that doesn't seem like a happy existence. So I have actively tried and worked very hard at understanding things on such deep levels so I can then go, okay, have compassion for you know, people that have hurt you or you know people that have hurt people you love. Have compassion and deep understanding and then be the change you want to see in your life. You know? Can I add something? Yeah. Yeah, I know when you want to add something because well, you have this well, cute well, little one, face. You're like, I want to say something. Well, you know what it is because, you know, maybe because I am a little bit older. I don't know how old the person who's asking the question is. But, you know, first of all, when your heart breaks, it breaks open. And if you're really paying attention, there's so much beauty in the pain because you feel and see things like you never have before. And if you can absolutely trust that the reason for everything that's happened is leading you to your destiny and you could lean into that, that is the key. And if you just trust that the, this plan is what you, it, it's going to be the thing that you were born to do. And I always say, because I learned this when I was away um, on holiday from a Scottish wise man and he said, what's meant for you won't pass you by. But when you're constantly struggling and everything's wrong with my life, but when you say, I accept, I accept this and I am in pain, but I'm going to sit in this pain and I'm going to learn and grow. So let me just accept this with love and compassion for self. And that will help you find your way on your path. Very true. And, um, Sarah Wag, I want to Sarah E Wag. I don't know if I um I want to answer this question quickly, and then I want to um. Can she ask if we can do a sound healing outside sometime? So we oh. actually thought about that, <laughs> and there's two things. Um, one, the light is so bright that it would just I don't know what it would do. It would just like blast everything out. But it's less about the light; it's more about the sound needing walls. You see all the sirens going by right Because now? there's, right here in LA, there's like thousands of helicopters overhead, sirens everywhere. It's a little chaotic outside. And um, and so this feels more contained and more controlled. So we, we choose to stay in here. Um, I wanted to say something to your question. I forgot. It's okay. <laughs> wait, wait. Tell me the last thing you were saying. About was... trust and um, what's meant for you or how you about. Yeah. Um, yes. So what I wanted to add to that is, um, you know, often we get angry. And when my father was killed and taken from me at 16, I was angry. I was such a strong believer in God. And I mean, I went to church from seven to 10 by myself every Sunday. By myself, I walked and I was a leader in the Sunday schools. Um, and I was, a, I was a youth leader in the church. And when my father was killed, it really tested my faith. And I stopped believing in God. I was so angry that I said, how could you do this to me? And I had already been through so much that it was like, how could you do this to me? And then as I moved forward and got old, you know, I matured. And I went through a lot of roads to get to this other place but when I got there I went everything does happen for a reason and we don't understand it and we don't like it there are things that I've experienced as of the last 10 years that I am not happy about and it hurts but we just gotta go whatever and for whatever reason this has happened I have to trust that this is my path and that this life that we have, there are lessons, there are karmic lessons that we need to learn. Don't die in this lifetime not learning those lessons. Why you came here and why these things happen. Look at it, look at life beyond this physical, material world. Look at life, your soul as an expansion of a bigger life. Uh, this is a moment for your soul's existence. 
to, to work through things that it didn't previously get to, or it, you're given this opportunity to look at things and go, my God, how am I going to handle these hardships? How am I going to do that? And, and so you want to think through these things that happen to you and you want to really be smart about how you approach them. You want to feel good about the decisions. You want to die with honor. And you want to feel good about the decisions you made. And you want to feel like you've learned the lessons you came here to learn. No regrets. No regrets. And, and it's hard, these things that we all experience on different levels. But it's hard for everybody. But really, think through them. Instead of getting obsessed with the, you know, I can't believe this is happening. And this, this. And, you know, screw that person. Da, 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 and sharing it. And typing it and blogging it and and neg putting more negativity out there and calling and gossiping and just phew, go to the people that elevate you that lift you up that can be a guide that can guide you through whatever it is in a really healthy honorable fashion mm -hmm. that you feel good about go with grace be regal in your manner <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right we have only a couple more minutes. How do you stop the anxiety and become the person who's feeling good with herself? Well, I could speak to that a bit. Um, I struggled with anxiety like terribly for many years to the point where I couldn't even sleep at night. And sometimes you have to, it's like not just one thing, it's a few things. But I highly recommend meditation will change your life. And this, like Willana and I do too, the sound healing, um, these things will start to change the physiological part of the anxiety to help your body start to get out of fight or flight. Because if you're always in fight or flight, then you're always gonna be spinning with anxiety. And there are some supplements and things you could take to get your body out of anxiety and then do the work that we're talking about. So there's a few things like, you know, Ashwagandha is a great thing. Their CBD is a great thing. Ashwagandha, you need to explain what Ashwagandha well, is. Well, Ashwagandha, I mean, if I, I, I do a whole segment on it on, on my, oh, my with Instagram. Oh, her, her just with Trish. But... It, and you could write to me. But I do have a lot of different things for stress if you want to write to me. Um, but once you get your physical body out of the stress, then I recommend doing the kind of work that we're talking about, which is meditating, writing, connecting, get your goals together. Let, let go of your past, you know, make amends to people in your life that you're still at odds with, and then get to what you, self, wants. Why were you born? What are you here to accomplish? Sometimes we have anxiety because we don't know where we fit in the world. We don't know our purpose. That will bring anxiety. So if you connect to yourself and find out what is it that you really want and what is it that you came here to do, and then if you lean into that and take away the physical anxiety with some of the other stuff we're talking about, you're going to blossom. You're going to grow. Your frequency will grow. Well, anxiety to me is there for a reason. It's a, it's a loud, almost like an alarm that's saying, hey, look into this. It is there to tell you something. It's trying to tell you something. So the best thing you can do is go into it with cautiously <laughs> with breathing because you need to breathe in it if you're going to address it you have to understand the origin of the anxiety why am i feeling this way where is this coming from what is it connected to and when you quiet your mind through meditation or breath <sighs> close your eyes look into it what is this anxiety what is it? What is it? What is this? Where is it coming from? Hi, what do you want me to know? Mm -hmm. What do you want me to learn? What is it here that you're trying to tell me? Help me see this. Breathe and quiet the mind enough so you can hear it because it will tell you something. Mm -hmm. And it will say, I'm afraid of this, that. I'm afraid I'm not going to ever work again. <laughs> That's one of mine. <laughs> Am I ever going to work again? Um, one of them is, you know, am I going to find love again? Am I going to have a family? Um, 
am I gonna, am I gonna get, you know, kids, am I gonna ever get into the school I wanna get into? Oh my God, these exams. <sighs> get off the phone, quiet your mind, breathe and present, get into present time. Look around you, take in your environment and center yourself. That really helps with anxiety. That's a good question because I know everybody's feeling it. So and just to add to that, I think sometimes when you're younger, you don't feel like you're enough. You don't feel like you're worthy. And if you get quiet and do everything we're talking about, you have to start building the esteem in yourself to say, I am enough and build your confidence so that you can go out and you can do the work you're here to do. Any other questions? First of all, I just want to say thank you so much. Or, oh, Dana said she wrote articles on how she got out of her anxiety and anger. Um, if, if any of you want to check out Bullies Keep Out. Um, cool. Dana. Um, any other questions before we sign off? Uh, thank you so much for the outpour of love and support. Thank you. I honestly cannot be here without you guys. You, I love you all so much. Thank you so much for your love and support with Keep It Regal and Dish with Trish. We are finding ways to stay creative during this time and to give back and also to just have fun, you know, because it's important to have fun and um, and to find ways. We're lucky we have one another. We're like, how many people could you get be quarantined with? <laughs> there are many people I don't want to be quarantined with, but this woman back here is my soul sister and I'm grateful for her. Um and um, what about but what about when the alarm is there twenty four seven and you can't even wake up without the pounding feeling in your chest and a sickness? I think it's like you said you need to go into it and you need to understand it because the reason why it keeps showing up is because it's not being dealt with. And you may need things like CBD and other supplements. I, yes, that supplements that will start to get rid of the the nervousness. And I know what you're talking. I would have panic attacks where I had to go to the hospital, so I understand it. Yeah, so it's fine. It's CBD, yeah. CBD, and um, you know, if you're not into CBD, some people have weird feelings about it. Um, it doesn't have THC in it, so uh, you know, you don't have to worry about that. But there's also ashwagandha is a mushroom. Um, that's what she's talking about, and Dishwa Trish has um, some stuff there that you can learn more about ashwagandha. Um, but there are also, you know, be proactive with your anxiety. Find yeah, books that can help yeah. you. You know, read, find tools. To, I'm a very tool-oriented person. I like tools. How, how do I handle this situation? What do I do? You know, communication sort of, there's like, um, you know, I, I'm a big communicator. I love um, formulas, <laughs> you know, um, and it's and it doesn't mean you have to follow them all the time. They're guidelines. It's like a toolkit. And it's, it's a good, you know, you, it's like learning a, a new instrument. You got to follow, you got to, practice practice until it just starts to flow and you all of a sudden are like you're feeling it you're riffing it and then it becomes part of your dna it's the same thing with any tools it feels kind of like ah, ah, at first i don't know what i'm doing and then once you get into it a little bit more it just becomes second nature the more you start to work on yourself in these ways of acquiring tools for your toolkit the better you are going to be. And it's just not even going to have to be like, okay, I need this tool right now. It's just going to be like, I know how to handle this. Mm -hmm. I know what to do with this. And to add to what Lana's saying, have a schedule for yourself. Get up, go hiking, do a workout, make a, call your, your mom or a friend. How can I help you today? Start setting up a schedule so that you're not just free falling and in fight or flight. Go, this is what I'm going to do and stick to it. Yes, and um, diet is very critical. Diet is, very, diet is critical. very critical. What Sugar. you put in your body is that is feeding your mind. If your mind is eating crap, your mind isn't going to think properly. Mm -hmm. If you don't eat, then your mind, your body starts taking energy from the brain because it needs it needs it needs to stay awake. It needs to operate, and then your brain isn't operating well because you're hungry and you're tired. So. I know I'm tired constantly, <laughs> but um, somehow I'm operating okay. But I think it's, uh, the other day I wasn't. The other day I was not operating okay. I was like, nah, nah, nah. Um, Anyhow, we only have two minutes left, so um, I can know, we can't answer any more questions, but I just want to say I love you all. Thank you so much. Um, if you all could please, because I'm a Latina woman and I, I like tradition, 
um, light a candle for George Floyd yes. and his family mm -hmm. and for the situation that's happening in this world. Find ways to get involved to try to help us end this crisis, this racial crisis war. Um, I am concerned that this is um, going to get even worse and uglier. And we need to watch this, my story. I posted something on Killer Mike. He's had the most brilliant um, speech this morning on the news. Or was, I think it was this morning or last night, whenever. But I saw it this morning and I posted it. Please watch my story. And, um, and um, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you all. And Trish loves you too. Yeah. And until the next time. And go in peace and love. And be the voice of change. Americans, register to vote. Thank you.